Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at solving for x in multi-step equations. So to do this, I've, I've made my equations have some fractions in them, so that will help us as we move through these questions. Let's look. We have 4x plus 1 over 3 is equal to 3. Now, when we solve this type of question, we do have these same steps, find the variable, what happened, and do the inverse. And we can solve it this way. It's just oftentimes more helpful to just actually look at the equation. But I'll show you both ways and see whichever way you like better. So our variable is x. What is happening to x in this equation? It's being multiplied times 4. We're adding 1 to it. And then we're dividing that whole side by 3. So we're doing three different operations to our x. And we're going to have to undo all of those in the correct order. So at this point, we really want to know what order are we doing these in. And we do them in the opposite of the order of operations. Or in other words, we peel away layers so that we can get closer and closer to that. So first, we're going to get rid of the fraction here. Then we're going to get rid of the 1 then we're going to get rid of the 4. That's the order that we're going to do these. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. To get rid of our fraction right here, we're going to multiply times 3 on both sides of the equation. Whoops. So we're going to multiply times 3 to both sides of the equation. What that does is the 3's cancel each other out here, and we're left with 4x plus 1 on the left side, and that's equal to 9 on the right side. 3 times 3 is 9. The next step is that we're going to get rid of the 1. To do that, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides of our equation, leaving us with 4x is equal to 8. Now we've worked our way in so that we have only one operation left, multiplying times 4. To get rid of that, we'll divide both sides by 4. And our final answer is that x is equal to 2. That's going to be the final answer for this equation. x is equal to 2. In our next equation, we're going to follow those same steps, but I'm not going to write them out here as much. Um, we are looking for our variable x. We can look through there and see all the operations, but instead what I'm going to do is try and focus on x and peel away everything that is not x. So I'm going to start by getting rid of our fraction. Same step as what I did before, only I'm multiplying over here because there's more space. <laughs> So I'm going to multiply both sides times 12. That gets rid of our fraction and leaves us with 7x plus 6 is equal to 4. 4 times 12, sorry, which is 48. Now I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. Again, kind of peeling away layers so that I can get to my variable. 7x is equal to 48 minus 6, which is 42. And now I divide both sides by 7 for my final answer of x is equal to 6. Notice this one was 7 times x, so we did division to undo that. So with each of those steps, I'm trying to peel away the layers to get back to my variable. My variable is what we're looking for. When you're solving equations, you're trying to say, what is it is the variable equal to? In all of these, you can also check your work, and I'll show you how to do that. We would plug this value, x equals 6, into the original equation. And see if it gives you a true answer. So that's the original equation. 7 times 6 is 42. 42 plus 6 is 48. 48 divided by 12 gives us 4. Good. Notice that all of those numbers that I was saying as I was doing this in my head are the same numbers that we've come up with here. 42, 48, 12. Right? 
all of those same exact numbers. Now let's look at another question, the last question for this lesson. And for this one I decided to throw in a bunch of negatives and also add a little level of complication over here on the right side of the equation. For this type of equation, again, we're going to follow those same steps. Find our variable, ask what happened, and then do the inverse for both sides of the equation. So our variable is right here. I want to get rid of this 8 first. But it's kind of hard to get rid of that when I have some unresolved issues over here. So it's going to actually add an additional step. So I'll just go ahead and rewrite this entire thing out. Negative 2x minus 4 divided by 8 is equal to 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. Now our equation looks exactly like the one from the previous question, um, except the numbers are different. But it's going to look very similar, and we're going to solve it exactly the same way. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation times 8. That helps us to cancel out these 8s and leave us with negative 2x minus 4 is equal to 2 times 8, which is 16. I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation, which leaves me with negative 2x is equal to 20. Now what I'm going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, negative 2 actually. And that's going to cancel out, leaving me with x by itself on the left side of the equation. And when I divide 20 divided by negative 2, I'm left with negative 10 for my final answer. I can check my work by plugging it back into the original equation if I like, but that's going to be my solution. x is equal to negative 10. A couple things to keep in mind. Remember all the rules for addition and subtraction with positive and negative numbers. When we're solving for a variable, we're peeling away layers to get back to our variable. We have to find the variable, ask what happened, and then do the inverse operation to undo whatever happened. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.